MFG Productions 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 John Arthur Johnson Better known as Jack Johnson He was somebody who was a polarizing figure at the beginning of the 20th century. Known for his boxing, but better yet, heading into the 21st century and even in the mid to latter years of the 20th century, his depiction has been viewed on a large scale by millions of people, but at the same time, many people may not know what they were actually looking at. But first, let me take you down memory lane. Jack Johnson was born March 31st, 1878, and he was the third of nine children to Henry and Tina Johnson. I found one interesting fact from Jack's life, and that was this. From Jeffrey Ward's 2004 Unforgivable Blackness, The Rise and Fall of Jack Johnson, it says in his book, Johnson remembered growing up with a gang of white boys in which he never felt victimized or excluded. Remembering his childhood, Johnson said, quote, As I grew up, the white boys, they were my friends. They were my pals. I ate with them, played with them, and slept at their homes. Their mothers gave me cookies, and I ate at their tables. No one ever taught me that white men were superior to me. End quote. Now putting that into perspective, it's just crazy to me. Jack Johnson was born in 1878 which was 15 years after the Emancipation Proclamation. So being removed from slavery was still relatively new and fresh on the brain, so to speak. And I know it's not far-fetched to think that racism existed in every single area of the world, but it just blows my mind that in Texas, historically one of the most racist states in American history, he was able to do these things and then not be extreme repercussions. That just blows my mind. But I want you all to keep that in mind. On November 1st, 1898, Johnson made his boxing debut against Charlie Brooks and defeated him in the second round of a 15 round bout. And from my studies, Jack Johnson was basically considered to be the Mike Tyson of that era. He was bigger, stronger, faster than practically all of the other white fighters that he faced and some of the black fighters. Just from his style of boxing to how much power and curiosity he brought to each fight. He defeated the two-time heavyweight champion Frank Childs. Now pause for a minute. Have you guys ever heard of the Man Act? If not, I want you to go look up that act. It was the act that was passed June 25th, 1910. And in its original form, the act made it a felony to engage in interstate or foreign commerce transportation of any woman or girl for the purpose of prostitution or debauchery or for any immoral purpose. And the reason I borrowed this act was because this act was put in place to stop one man, and that man was Jack Johnson. The reason being is because Jack Johnson would literally beat the crap out of these white men and leave the ring with white women. And he was arrested on October 18, 1912 for violating this act for his relationship with Lucille Cameron, who he eventually ended up marrying in 1921 anyway. And not saying this next segment of information is an issue because you can't help who you love, but soon it will all make sense. If you look at every single one of the three marriages that Jack Johnson had, It was with white women. Every single one. Now I hope you're truly ready to have your mind blown completely. There's a such thing as buck figures in Hollywood. And to paint a picture of a buck figure, it's practically a larger than life figure that is usually put in roles to make them seem superhuman to an extent. For an example, Michael Clark Duncan was considered a buck figure in the Green Mile. From that movie, they made it a point to make John Coffey just this humongous, untouchable, mythical specimen, also perceived as violent, even though that was the total opposite of what and who he was in the film. But as I digress, I'm sure in one way or another, everybody watching this is familiar with the movie King Kong. What if I told you that that movie was based off the boxer Jack Johnson, and there's proof. If you look at King Kong, 
It's about a large gorilla being obsessed and practically infatuated with white women to a degree of nausea. Now, for the original King Kong, as it states, it took place in New York City. And the one place in New York City that King Kong was tied to was the Empire State Building. And just think about it. You're born a gorilla, right? No trees, no bananas, nothing like that in New York City. What in the world is a gorilla chasing a white woman doing there? Madison Square Garden. If you don't know, Madison Square Garden is the boxing capital of the world. And in the ending of the movie, when King Kong was on the Empire State Building chasing the right woman, what happened? He was killed by white men in helicopters with guns. Symbolism. And throughout the history of it, it showed. Even through every rendition of King Kong, and most recently, the depiction of King Kong and King Kong versus Godzilla, a large gorilla in chains being taken across the water to America by white men on a boat. Sounds familiar? Symbolism. And another side note to bring validity to what I said. Remember the movie Planet of the Apes, Rise of the Apes? The main chimpanzee in the film, his name was Caesar. And if you do your research, Caesar was the name that slave owners gave their enslaved Africans. And there was a big gorilla in the cage, and his name was what? You guessed it, Buck. And how did Buck die in the movie? They were bombarded by the police in helicopters, and he sacrificed his life for Caesar by going to attack the police in a rage, and in turn, he was killed by the police in the midst of his rage. Symbolism. So that goes to show that even in the 1930s, they were taking black figures in the world and making a mockery of them through film. And I feel that these levels of symbolism should definitely be taught to our children and generations to come. So they'll know exactly what they're looking at and how to process it. And it's not even shocking to know that even in that time frame, they viewed black men as out of control, overly hostile gorillas.